Hello learners, welcome to Python Revision Tool Session 5. In previous class, we have revised the three basic types of flow of executions in Python. That is sequential, conditional and iterative. In this class, we are going to view various statements using which conditional and iterative flow are being created. We'll also see various code examples in and around it. So let us begin. Conditional flow. Conditional flow is implemented using conditional statements or constructs of Python. That is the if statements. A if statement in Python has three variants namely simple if, compound if and complex if. Let us first go through the syntax of each one of them and later on we will see a code example related to the use of these statements. The simple if. The simple if put forwards a very basic conditional construct where a single conditional expression is being checked for being true or false and accordingly a statement under the if is executed or is skipped. You can observe the detailed syntax of simple if before yourself on the screen. The condition is terminated with a colon symbol which marks the beginning of the scope or the body under if. So any statement written below this with a single indentation will be treated as part of the if statement and will get executed if the conditional expression attached to if is evaluated to be true. Let us now observe the syntax of compound if. The compound if is called so because here the if has an else pair. That is if the statement under the if isn't executed for its condition being false then the else part is, is going to be executed and any statement under the scope of else gets executed. It is worthy to note here that on execution of if part the else part will be skipped or omitted. Thus out of if and else only one of them gets executed. So we can observe that if else provides a branched way of execution where only one of the path that is either if or else gets executed. Let us now see our final conditional statement that is that is complex if. The complex if provide a syntax as it can be observed on your screen which offers a chain of multiple conditions to be checked and under each condition a set of statements are being placed. This chain of multiple condition ends with an optional else part. So we can say that the complex if provides multiple path of execution out of which only one path is chosen and executed and all other paths are skipped. More specifically we may say that conditions under each if will be checked and if found true then statements under that particular if will be executed leaving all other ifs below it being skipped. Let us go through an example code to understand functionality. Let us first understand simple if. We will create a program which will print appropriate message if a number is positive. So let us go to the file mode. And in the new file, we'll create a new program where we have num is equal to 3 if num is greater than 0 print num is positive number. And then will have a statement over here print this is always printed. 
now let us execute the code and see what what, what output it gives us So it gives us the output 3 is positive number in the first line and then second line it gives us the output this is always printed. So let us analyze these two output and we will find out why is this so. So as you can see that the condition is satisfied because since the num is greater than 0. So if, if condition is getting satisfied and the statement which is to print the value of num with a is positive number uh, text gets executed and the first line of output is being seen. And the second line of the output is outside the if condition. So whatever will be the situation that line will be always executing. Now let us uh, replace the value of num with minus 1 say for example and see again what output it gives us. So you can see here this also gives you an output but this time we are not getting the first line that means the condition of if never gets satisfied and the statement which was printing the value of num with a is positive statement gets omitted or skipped since the condition of is if is not satisfied and the last line which was uh, in in any case it was to be printed gets printed so this is always printed the output will be given okay so uh, in this above example we see that the simple if condition has only one statement under its body or scope and the last line of the code is outside the scope of if as it does not follows the same indentation as that of the previous line right the indentation you as you can see in the cur cursor over here that the indentations are different here we have different indentation whereas this indentation is quite different so due to the difference in the indentation this this particular line the first line is inside or within the if condition and the second line is outside the if right now when we change the value of num to minus 1 the value of the condition the if condition that is minus 1 greater than 0 becomes false and hence the condition is not executed or the condition under the statement under the if condition does not get executed. While in the case when the value of num was 3 the if condition that is num greater than or equal to 0 stands out to be true and hence the statement under the if condition gets executed and the control comes out the if of the if block where it executes the last line as well. Let us now understand the working of compound if will create a program to check if a number is positive or negative and display an appropriate message. So let us go to the file mode and open a new file to write the code. So we have num is equal to 3 and then we write here if num is greater than or equal to 0 then print positive or 0 else print negative number. Let us execute this program and see what output it gives. So it gives positive or 0. Now let us understand this output why it has come so. To understand this output let us go back to the code itself and understand the value of num was 3. So this condition num greater than or equal to 0 becomes true as 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Hence the statement under the scope of if gets executed and the statements which is under the else part gets omitted or skipped. Hence the output is positive or 0. Now let us uh, replace this 3 with minus 5 
and see what happens again. Let us see what happens. It gives us negative number. Now, why is this so? Why why this gives us negative number? Let us let us uh, understand this output in view of this code. The num is minus five here. So minus five. Let us let us evaluate the expression. Minus five greater than or equal to zero gives you false because minus five is not greater than zero. It is less than zero, and hence this part which is under the if condition that is in the scope of if condition gets omitted or skipped and the else part gets executed and hence whatever statement is there inside else part gets executed and which is giving the output as negative number so now let us let us replace this num again with zero and see what happens to the output let us run the program now you can see the output is positive or zero. Now why this output is positive or zero here? So see the pro uh, program again. We have num equal to zero, that which means that this condition when evaluated, num greater than or equal to zero, the num equal to zero part becomes true as the value of num now is zero. So zero equal to zero is true and hence the statement under the if gets executed since the if statement is satisfied and its evaluate is evaluated to be true so this part positive or zero gets executed and the else part is omitted or it is skipped so we are getting the result as positive or zero so in the above program we have seen that when the num was equal to 3 the if condition gets satisfied and the statement under the if gets executed. But when we replace the value of num with minus 5, the if condition stands false and hence the program control flows to the else part executing the statement under the else part. Further, when the value of num is changed to 0, the if condition stands true as the num is equal to 0 and hence the statement under if is executed to executed omitting the else part so i hope this is understandable let us see complex if example to understand its working in this program we check if the number is positive or negative or zero and display an appropriate message so let us write the code let us go to the file mode quickly and we write here num is equal to 3.4 and then I'm going to write a if command if num greater than 0 then print positive number elif num is equal to equal to 0 print 0 else print negative number Let us execute the code and see what output it gives when the value of num initially is 3.4. As we execute the program, we see that we see that the output is positive number. Now let us analyze why this output has come to positive number. Let us let us find out in the code given code. So here you can see that. You can see here that the value num equal to 3.4 this value is a real value positive real value which is greater than equal to 0. So since this value 3.4 is greater than equal to 0 the condition 
this condition num greater than equal greater than zero gets satisfied this condition gets satisfied and the statement under num greater than equal to zero that is positive number print positive number gets executed and all other statements in the elif and else portion are not being satisfied and they are being skipped altogether so this is how it goes on when we are taking num equal to 3.4 now let us let us quickly go to the code again and make some change small change what i am going to do is i am going to change the value of num now to from 3.4 to something like num equal to 0 say for example and now execute the code again so that we can see the changes in the output now you can see the output comes as 0 the output here is 0 you can see that this output comes as 0 right now why this output is 0 here let us let us analyze the code again now this is the initial value of num num equal to 0 now this part num greater than 0 gets a value false it is evaluated as false as the value of num is not greater than 0 but it is equal to 0 so this this particular condition is not satisfied so the control jumps from here to the next if or elif better known as elif um, so now this statement will be checked for its truthness and it is found that the value of num since it is 0 0 equal to equal to 0 becomes true and hence this condition gets satisfied this condition gets satisfied and the statement under this condition that is print 0 gets executed so what we observe here is that this condition is not satisfied hence this part is skipped print positive number is skipped and now the control jumps to the next statement of that is elif part it is getting executed since the condition is satisfied and the value 0 is printed and after printing value 0 it the control never ever goes to the next conditions or next elif or else part it gets all the elif or else part under this particular num equal to equal to 0 gets skipped or are omitted altogether so we can say that by changing the value num equal to 0 this part is satisfied and hence print equal print 0 gets executed and the output is we are getting the output 0 so now let us uh, move on to our next uh, small change let us now uh, comment this thing and uh, uh, go to see uh, what happens if we are going to make a small change over here say i am going to change the value of num now to uh, minus 4.5 say for example now let us execute the code and see what happens now as you can observe here the value of num becomes the value of num is minus 4.5 and hence this part is not executed as since this condition is not satisfied also this condition is also not satisfied as the value of num is minus 4.5 which is which is less than 0 so num greater than 0 is not satisfied as minus 4.5 is not greater than 0 num equal to equal to 0 does not also get satisfied since minus 4.5 is not equal to equal to 0 and hence the control comes to the last part which is the else part and the statement under this else part gets executed altogether and hence the value number negative number gets printed so the our output negative number is getting printed since the control jumps to the last statement last else part and whatever is there inside the else part gets executed so this example this particular example shows how the complex if having multiple conditions multiple if else works all together so here is a practical exercise for you and I would like you to pause the video here and solve the exercise. The exercise is solved for you further in the class. So pause here for a while and open up your Python IDE to program this code. After you attempt this of your own, proceed with the video.
So let us, so see, let us the see the solution to the previous, to the previous code practice, practice exercise, exercise to generate, to generate BMI, BMI of a person. person. So let us see the solution to the previous code practice exercise to generate BMI of a person and show his or her health status. So for this, uh, let us go to a new file and we'll declare here uh, three variables we will be needing here that is his weight, his height and the BMI. Let us initialize all of them with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0, and 0 for example 0, 0.0. Now let us ask the user to in input first the weight then the height and then we will calculate the BMI. So asking the weight, weight is equal to float input enter the weight in kg then we will ask the height, height is equal to float input enter the height in meters after asking these two values we'll calculate the BMI of that person and the BMI will be calculated with the for help of a formula weight by height square so the weight divided by height square so height into height the expression will be weight is weight height into height or you may use the exponentiation operator over here so here is the formula for B calculating BMI now after calculating BMI let us see whether it is giving us the BMI correctly or not so print BMI let us run the program and see what happens so give it name so it is asking weight in kg let me enter my age uh, sorry weight and my height in meters say for example my height in meter is 1.7 so my BMI is 22.49 something like that so now after the calculation of BMI the program has to be extended the next part of the program was to extend the program so as to print the health status of the person based on the BMI pr being produced and it was according to the table given there so let us put the conditions enumerated in the table over here in the program. So we, we have to take the use of compound if or complex if let us discuss it. So here we get four conditions. The first condition is for underweight. The next condition is for normal weight. The third condition is for overweight conditions and the last one is for obese. So we have four conditions four different conditions. To be evaluated for a person's BMI. So here the best uh, construct to be used will be use of complex if or ladder if else. So let us use the ladder if else over here and see the program. So if BMI is less than 18.5 then we should we should print underweight. or starving right L L if the BMI is between 18.5 to 24.9 so put, to put this condition we have to use a uh, and operator so BMI greater than equal to 18.5 and it is at the same time the BMI is less than equal to 24.9 so then we have to print we have to print normal so this is the condition for normal weight so normal weight 
and if lf there is third condition lf the bmi is between 25 to 29.9 .9, we have to say that it is overweight so if the bmi is greater than equal to 25 and at the same time the bmi is less than equal to 29.9 .9, then we have to say print overweight and else the last part is the last condition is that if none of them none of the above conditions are being satisfied or met over then the condition the person is obeys so print obeys so finally we have obeys the condition for obeys if none of the above is satisfied so now let us print the program and let us see let us also print the bmi first so print your bmi is BMI and then uh, I have to put the conditions over here so let us run the program and see what is the result for me so let me show you the result over here enter the weight in kg so let me enter my weight 65 enter the weight in meters so let me enter my weight uh, height in meters is 1.7 so my the BMI is 22.49 which is normal weight. So my BMI comes as normal. Now let us execute the program so as to generate a overweight or underweight something like that. So for that we have to execute it again. So let us run the program again and see what happens. Let us put my weight as 45 and my height in meter as 1.7. Now see my BMI comes to be 15.57 and since it is less than 18.5 it produces underweight. So I have uh, this uh, example is being uh, clear to you and uh, let us proceed with the session. Weight. Weight. The iterative or the for loop statements are responsible to iterate a variable through a series of values present within a sequence using in keyword. With each iteration, the variable of the loop takes us to the next value present in the sequence. A sequence in Python is a group of items with a deterministic ordering. That is, the order in which we put them in is the order in which we get them out from them. For example, a list, tuple, dictionary and a string which you have learned in class 11 are being examples of sequences. Apart from it, there is also a function called range which has the ability to generate a range of numbers as sequence. Let us observe the working of a for loop with each of these sequence with help of a example code. Let us, Let us use, use the for, the for statement, statement iterating, iterating a, list. a list for fruits in. Let us use the for statement iterating a list for fruits in apple, guava. Banana grapes. Print fruits. So here you can see that when we execute when we when we iterate a fruits variable through a list of fruits using a for loop we can iterate with each and every element present in the list now let us now iterate a string to see what happens when we iterate uh, characters of a string using a for loop so for character in 
funny funny is a string over here funny print character now as you can see each and individual character of the string which was which is which is a sequence gets printed or gets iterated over using the for loop so we can iterate each and every character of a string using for loop now let us iterate a tuple using a for loop so for coordinates in list of coordinates say for example 4 comma 5 5 comma 6 4 comma 3 8 comma 9 so this is here is a list of tuples now we write print coordinate now you can see if I am going to execute this each and every tuple within the inside of the main tuple gets printed or gets iterated over using a for loop so using a for loop you can iterate individual elements present in a tuple now let us iterate an integer variable between a range of integers produced using a range function so let us go for the code for x in range 7 print x and here we will put end is equal to comma so that every value gets printed in the same line separated by comma now you can see the values which are getting printed are 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and 6 now you can observe there we have written range 7 so range 7 produces a series of values starting from 0 up to n minus 1 where n is passed to the range function as argument so here as an argument we have passed 7 so the list of values which are generated are from 0 to n minus 1 that is 7 minus 1 is 6 so each and every value which, which is present in the series gets iterated through the use of for so using for loop we can iterate through a range of values produced by the range function so now let us see another example to understand range more clearly there are many variations of range you have to understand each one of them so for x in range 2 comma 7 print x end equal to this now as you can see the range starts from 2 it starts from 2 and it gets ended up to 7 minus 1 that is 6 and the iteration is one at a time the loop is iterated for each value jumping one by one so after the first value 2 3 is produced and then 4 is produced and so on up to the last value which is 6 so now let us go for another variation of for loop using range function for range for x in range 2 comma 7 comma 2 this time we are adding a third argument and here we see that if we are going to print it we see x comma end now you can see the three values which are generated are 2 comma 4 comma 6 now let us explain th this particular output you have started with a value 2 in the series and the values goes up to value 6 which is 7 minus 1 and the iteration is done two at a time means taking two numbers of the series at a time the iteration is being done so x which is a variable value in for loop 
is getting iterated through this series of values from 2 to 7 taking 2 at a time. So the first value is 2 then the next 2 jumps goes to the value 4 and the 4 is printed again 2 jumps the value is we are getting is 6 and it is printed and hence we are coming to the end of the series since the series is up to 6 only. So the values 2, 4, 6 is printed. So you can understand this way we can iterate over a range of values skipping two values or three values or n number of values at a time. Now let us go to the next variation of this for loop for x in range ten comma three comma minus two print x Now you can see here, this time we have fixed the range value from a higher value that is 10 up to a lower point value that is 3. So the series of values which gets generated is between the higher value 10 and up to the lower value that which is 3 plus 1 that is 4 up to the value 4. So here the value of n is 3 so before the, just before that value is 4 and the value is integer 4 so the range starts from 10 and ends up to the value 4. Now since we have skipped we have iterated through this range taking two values at a time so the iteration is getting jumped over from 10 to 8, 8 to 6 and 6 to 4. Now you can see that this jumping is in decreasing order. This is so because we have taken the value of the third parameter or the third argument as negative. So there is a negative jump and hence the value is iterated in decreasing order. The value of x is iterated in decreasing order. So this is the last variant of the for loop. So let us, let us understand again these things uh, once again in brief that we can have, we can have uh, for loop going to be iterated using uh, list. So we can iterate list values using for loop. So the first value gets executed, gets iterated, then the then the for loop gets it itself jumped to the next value that is the next value is guava which will be printed and the third value and hence all the values present in the list gets executed, gets printed one by one. So we can iterate through each and every value inside present within a list using a for loop, right? So that is uh, one of the benefit of for loop. Similarly, we can use for loop for printing or going through or iterating through any of the sequences like we have seen here, this string, this string is also a sequence. So we are getting executed using this sequence. So let us come to the next uh, thing that is the for loop which is using a range function. So we here we see that we have a range function having two parameters 2 and 7. So the first parameter is 2 which is the starting value and 7 is the ending value. So it generates a range of values between 2 to 7 and the for loop is getting iterated over through this range taking one value at a time. And we can put in the in the next example we see we have seen that we can put what a third parameter also this is the third parameter which indicates the jump. Now how many jump will you will give, be giving. So for example it, it generates values 2 comma 7 2 to 7 that is 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 right like this it, it generates up to 6 so 2 we have taken 2 jumps so the jump will be from 2 to 4 and then from 4 to 6 so this generates values like 2 4 and 6 so here is another practical exercise for you and I would like you to pause the video at this point and solve the exercise. The exercise is solved for you further in the class. So pause here for a while and open up your Python ID to program this code. 
After you attempt this of your own, proceed with the video. So let us solve the previous practical exercise on for loop. The question was to print number of vowel letters present in your name. So let us do the exercise. Let us start with a new program file. Start the new program file and we have to declare here variable to keep our name. So we have to take name, input name from user. So input, enter your name. Since the, your name is a string, you don't have to use uh, int or float or any type of type conversion methods or functions. So input your name. Now you have to iterate through your name that is a string letter by letter and check whether it is a vowel letter or not. If it is a vowel letter, you have to increase a counter with a value 1. So we have to declare here a counter which keeps the count of total number of vowels being uh, arrived at. So we have to take a counter as 0. Now we'll start a loop, we'll iterate our name within the loop. So characters or characters in name, we have to iterate through our name and check whether this character is a vowel letter or not. So if this character in a e i o u then if it is out of these letters then what you have to do is you have to increase the value of counter by 1 so you write counter is equal to counter plus 1 now coming out of the loop you have to print the value of the counter so as to print the total number of vowel letters present in your name. So print total your name has total counter vowels. letters. So this is our program. Now let us compile it, run it and uh, see whether uh, the things are going correctly or not. So run module. Let's name the file as vowel. Now I have to enter my name Kamal Khan Gupta. Now you can see that your name has total five vowel letters because when my name was being iterated through each and every character was scanned in the loop and what we observe we observe that the loop starts from the letter k now when the loop goes to the if condition this letter k is being compared with a e i o u but it is not being found equal to any of them. So it moves to the next letter A. Similarly, the letter A is compared with A, E, I, O or U. So it is found that letter A is coming within this set of characters. So hence, the value of counter is increased to 1, which was initially 0. Now again, when the loop iterates to M, it it finds it not to be equal to any of these letters. Hence, the counter remains the same as 1. Again, it goes to letter A and it, founds, it finds that it, it, it matches with the vowel letter A. And hence, the counter is again increased. And in this iteration, the counter becomes equal to 2. Likewise, it goes on. And again, at this point, it gets another A. At this point, it gets u, which is again 
comes in the set of vowel letters and matches with u hence for five number of times 1 2 3 4 and 5 five number of times my counter gets increased to the final value which is equal to 5 so hence the counter value starts with 1 and it ends up to 5 so finally that counter value is being printed with a string. So your name has total 5. So this counter value 5 is being printed over here. So your name has total 5 vowels letter. So this example clarifies how we can iterate through a for loop and how we can one by one we can scan the iterating variable. Now let us come to the while statement. The while statement is another iterative or looping statement in Python which is used to repeat a set of statements under it several number of times or rather number of times which is not known. As you can observe the syntax of while on your screen, the while loop has a condition associated with it. As long as this condition is found to be true, the body of the while loop that is statements under the scope of the while loop keeps repetitively executing. As soon as the condition becomes false, the loop stops and the flow of control comes out of the loop. Let us understand the functioning of while loop through a code example. To understand, to understand working, working of, of while, while loop, loop let us let to understand working of while loop, let us write a program to add natural numbers up to n. So let us quickly go to the file mode, open a new file and understand the following code n is equal to int input enter the value of n and then we have sum equal to 0 i is equal to 1 while start a while loop over here while i is less than equal to n colon sum is equal to sum plus i and then increase the value of i with 1. So, and at last we print coming outside of the loop, we print the sum is sum. You have to change the variable name because as it is giving you the keyword it is taking it as a keyword so we have to change the value as summ sum. so here let us execute the program this program and see what happens when we give some input to the value n let us input the value of n as say for example I am giving 5 so it is giving us 15 because 1 plus it gives us 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 which co comes as 15 so let us understand this code and it's working so here we can see that we observe that we have a loop which is iterated starting from 1 up to up to a value n. Now here in this case we have entered the value of n as 5. So the loop starts with i and the condition becomes i less than equal to 5. So the value of n is here 5. So the first value of i is 1. Now this condition gets satisfied. This condition gets satisfied and then the value of sum which was initially 0 is being added with 
the current value of i which is which is 1 the first value is 1 so 0 here 0 plus 1 this gives you 1 and hence the value of sum becomes 1 now after execution of this statement this is this this particular statement increases the counter value of i with 1 and hence here in this case the i becomes 2 so here the i was 1 the condition was 1 less than equal to 5 in the next iteration of while loop the value of i becomes 2 so what happens in the next iteration is that in the next iteration when the loop is executed for the second time the value of i becomes 2 and the condition becomes 2 less than equal to 5 which is true which is evaluated to be true and then the sum is added with the current value of i which is 2 so the value of 2 will be substituted here and the value of sum which was earlier uh, was 0 plus 1 equal to 1 now will become 1 plus 2 and hence the value of sum will become 3 in this iteration and again the value of i is iterated from 2 to 3 so hence the value of i will also becomes 3 so finally at the end of this iteration we get the value of sum as 3 the value of i becomes 2 and the value of sum becomes 3 2 plus 1 equal to 3 so uh, and the value of i is iterated to a value 3 so in the next iteration what happens we have we, we have 3 less than equal to 5 now the value of sum which was 3 is being substituted here and the value of i which was 3 is substituted here and hence the value of new value of sum becomes 6 and the value of i is iterated to the next value of i which is which becomes 4 and hence at the end of the third iteration what happens the value of sum becomes 6 now let us come to the next iteration and see what happens in the next iteration the value of the value of i is 4 which is less than equal to 5 the condition is again satisfied the value of sum is 6 so 6 plus 6 plus 4 which is 10 which is 10 so then the value the new value of sum becomes 10 and the value of i becomes 4 plus 1 that is 5 the new value of i becomes 5 the value of i becomes 5 right next so finally at the end of the fourth iteration what we get is the value of sum is 10 and the value of i is 5 now coming to the last iteration when it happens the condition is the i is iterated to the next value which becomes 5 so 5 is less than equal to 5 which is again true because 5 is equal to 5 and hence the value of sum which was earlier 10 is added with 5 to give 15 so the new sum will be 15 and new i will be 5 plus 1 that is equal to 6 the new value of sum is 6 so at the end of the fifth iteration we get the value of sum as 15 and the value of i becomes 6 now let us see what happens to the next iteration when we when the loop is again repeated so we get what we get here the condition is 6 the value of i is beca has become 6 so 6 is less than equal to 5 the value of n remains same that is 5 so the condition stands 6 is less than equal to 5 which is false so since the condition has become false now the control will jump from this statement coming out of the loop to the last statement it will never go inside the loop again and it comes out of the loop and this statement is printed and the final value of of sum which was 15 gets printed over here so the final output is 15 what we get here so i hope this is understood the functioning of while loop in a in a python program so you have to understand the basic principle behind the iteration of loop when we are uh, using uh, while loop but one has to take care of this particular reinitialization of the counter variable i if it would not have been reinitialized the loop will never execute again and again 
So let us let us understand by removing this particular line of code and see what happens, what effect it, it gives to the program. Let us understand by remove, let us remove this line and see what output it gives. Now, I am again entering the value of ns5. Now, you can see that it is not executing anything and the program is being halted. The whole program gets halted and it is going into, into a infinite loop as because the sum is never reached as because the value of i remains true forever because the value initial value of i was 1, the condition is ever ever and ever satisfied, uh, one is always less than equal to 5, it gets repeatedly satisfied and the loop runs forever and hence a uh, infinite loop is initialized or it is initiated. So this type of error should not be uh, done when we are dealing with while loop. Int. So here is another practical exercise for you and I would like you to pause the video at this point and solve the exercise. The exercise is solved for you further in the class. So pause here for a while and open up your Python ID to program this code. After you attempt this of your own, proceed with the video so to get the solution. The previous, the previous question, question. The previous question was to find out first 15 numbers or natural numbers rather divisible by a given number n. So to solve this problem we will use while loop. Let us start the code by writing the new into a new code window. So let us start the new file. Let us initialize a variable called i which is a counter for keeping track of the number of natural numbers which are being obtained. And then let us take another value num, num is equal to say for example, I have to input that number because that number is uh, the divisibility with that number will be checked. So int input enter any number and then we will take another variable called n and initialize this num in n. Now let us start a while loop and inside the while loop I will write while i is less than or equal to 50 since i has to i has to be i has been taken as 1 it will iterate up to 50 thus producing 50 numbers of values or natural numbers divisible by num. So i is equal to 50 and then what I will do I will write a condition in if if inside within the while loop we will write a condition if n which starts from num itself n percent num is equal to equal to 0 then we must print this value of n with a comma symbol separator and also will increase the value of i the counter i with 1 because since we have got one divisible number value so we will increase the value of counter i with 1 now coming out of the condition we will try to increase the value of n by 1 so that we are going to check the next value which is divisible by num so n will be increased by 1 also but this you have to keep in mind that this increment must be done outside this if condition otherwise the number n will not be increased and it will remain same at the same place that is equal to num itself. So the while loop will not run as it is intended. So now let us go to print this value. Let us execute the code and see what happens. So you have to save the code with a name. So first n or first 50 rather natural numbers divisible by i. So enter any number 
so let us check the divisibility with 91 so i will find out this program will find out first 50 natural numbers which are divisible by, by 91 so now you can see that it is going to generate 50 first 50 values and the first 50 values are 91 182 273 364 and then dot 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 up to 4550 so these are the first 50 natural numbers now let us concentrate on code and see what how does the code execute it and give this answer the result let us analyze the code now you can see that the iteration itself started with a value 50 the iteration itself started with a value 50 so the first value of i here is 1 the first value is itself is 1 so we have 1 as the first value of i now suppose that the number num is inputted as 91 so the first value of n is also 91 now when we check this value this condition while condition i is less than equal to 50 this is found to be true so hence the value num n that is 91 percent 91 in the first iteration itself this condition will be checked 91 percent 91 which is coming to be 0 and hence the first value of n will be printed which is nothing but 91 91 and and then this value of i will be incremented by 1 so that the value of i which was previously 1 gets increased to 2 so the value of i will be increased to 2 and also coming out of this if condition the value of n will be increased with 1 so that the value of n which was 91 first now changes to 92 now the loop will be continued the while loop will be continued and again the same thing will be repeated so let us see the next or the second iteration in the second iteration the value of n becomes 92 and i becomes 2 so let us find out 2 is the condition will be 2 is less than equal to 50 which is found to be which is found to be true so since it is true it goes inside it and then the value of n which is nothing but 92 is being placed here and percent 91 is being checked because the value of num is still 91 the num, num is still having the value 91 the changed the changes are being made in n rather than num so the value of n changed to 92 but the number num remains 91 only so 92 percent 91 will be checked and it will be found that it is not equal to 0 since it is not equal to 0 these two lines these two lines will not be executed because they are inside the body of if and it and the control will jump to the next statement n plus equal to 1 so hence the value of n will be increased by 1 so hence it goes to 93 rather and does not print any value n here so the, our output was remaining like 91 comma only so let us go to the next iteration and see what happens the value of i still remains 2 at 2 because i is also a part of this if statement so since these two lines have not been executed this line is also not executed thus the value of i remains the same that is equal to 2 only so now let us go to the next third iteration in the third iteration itself the i becomes 2 2 less than 50 is still true and hence inside it we will get 90 the value of n becomes what the value of n becomes 93 so 93 now percent 91 is still not equal to 0 hence again these two lines will not be executed like this it will continue for uh, uh, several values between 91 up to the next value which is there so let us check out what was the next value for uh, this particular um, number so we, we have seen that uh, in our output the next value to be found out was the next value to be found out was 182 so up to 181 this particular this loop will be executed so 
up to 181 that means up to n is equal to 181 this will be executed and after that what will happen let us see let us execute that iteration when the value of n becomes 181 so again when the value of 1 uh, n becomes 181 it will go to this line and it will become what it will increase the value of n by 1 so n becomes 181 plus 1 that is 182 now when n becomes 182 it will again go inside still the the condition becomes this condition i less than 50 is nothing but 2 less than equal to 50 and this again will come here and then uh, the value of n will be substituted here so that the condition becomes 182 percent 91 182 percent 91 and then it gives you equal to equal to it be it it give it, it is divisible since 182 is divisible with 91 this condition is found to be true when this condition is found to be true this line will be executed this condition will be satisfied and then again n will be printed and the value of n printed will be 182 so our output will be the first output was 91 the second output will be 182 and hence this line will be also executed so making the value of i change to i is equal to i plus 1 the previous value of i was 2 so it will be going to change to 2 plus 1 equal to 3 2 plus 1 equal to 3 and then the value of n will be also increased and it will go to 183 and so on so like this it will go on and it will continue for 50 odd numbers 50 different number values to be printed which are divisible by 91 so this is the solution and if you have any problem regarding understanding of this solution you may uh, contact me over the kaizala or the online uh, forums now let us come to the break and continue statements which are part and parcel of the logical flow statements in python in python the break and continue statements can alter the flow of a normal iterative statement or a loop Loops iterate over a block of code until test expression is false. But sometimes we wish to terminate the current iteration or even the whole loop without checking text expression. So the break and continue statements are used in these cases where we want to halt the loop or terminate the loop without checking the test expression. The break statement terminates the loop containing it as you can see in the example before you on the screen. Control of the program flows to the statement immediately after the body of the loop. If break statement is inside a nested loop that is a loop within a loop that we will see in our future classes, break will terminate the innermost loop. Now let us come to the continue statement as you can follow the the example which is shown on the screen for continue statement the continue statement is used to skip the rest of the code inside a loop for a current iteration only loop does not terminates but continues on with the next iteration let us understand the two statements with the help of an let us put the code we just saw into idle and execute them to understand working of break and continue statements first let us look at the break statement with the help of an example. So let us go to the file mode and create a new file to write the code as for val in string if val is equal to equal to i which is a character inside the, the string string break we should break print val and then we just go outside the loop and print the end let us see what happens when we execute this particular code now as you can see here the output shown here is str is being printed the characters s t and r is being iterated using for loop and it is being printed but it has left 
it has left one value which is i and after i whatever was there is also being left over so the first three letters s t and r is being printed over here as you can see on your screen that we have printed the first three letters and the letter from the letter i all other letters has been skipped and this is due to the for uh, use of break statement inside the for loop let us understand uh, viewing the code example again and see why this is so as you can see in the code example we can see in the code example that the condition was if val is equal to equal to i you have to break so first when the loop was iterated the for loop was iterated the first value of val was s and hence this condition is not satisfied because s is not equal to equal to i and hence the break was not executed and the val was printed so the first value the first value s is being printed now when in the next iteration the value of val becomes t and then t is compared with i and it is found to be false and hence the break is not, not executed and the value t was printed so like like so on when we reach at i this condition i equal to i becomes true and hence the loop the 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 control flow goes inside the if condition and this break statement it gets executed and since the break statement gets executed it just communicate the compiler to come out of the of the loop within which it is present so we are present in the for loop so it comes out of the current for loop and goes out of that for loop and we come to the last line which is uh, printing the end so this example shows um, how we can use break statement now let us also understand the working of continue statement using another example let us write the code over here and we will comment out this code for the time being for the time being we are going to comment it out so that it doesn't gets executed again and here only we will write for val in string if val equal to equal to i continue print val print the end now let us execute the code and see what different it makes now as you can see here the output getting printed is s t r it is skipping the letter i and then again continuing to the next iteration of the character that is n n g so only that value i for which the continue statement was used is being is being skipped so what the continues does is that it skips that particular a particular uh, iteration of the loop and goes to the next very iteration continues to the next very iteration so here let us compare these two outputs once again as you can see here in the break statement as soon as i is reached all other all other characters are getting skipped and the loop is break, broken down and it is the control is coming out of the loop but here in this case what we observe that as soon as the compiler is getting it is uh, the for loop is iterating to the ith character or i character it continues the operation again leaving whatever was there inside for loop to be executed so for i the this command print val is not getting executed for i this command print val is not getting executed it is being skipped and for all other characters this print val command is executed equal to now let us come to the next important statement the pass statement in python programming pass is a null statement nothing happens when a pass is executed it results into no operation called as no
Now, you may think that if pass statement has nothing to do, then why is it at all in Python? Let me clarify it for you. Suppose we have a loop or a function that is not implemented yet, but we want to implement it in future. They cannot have an empty body. The interpreter would complain. So, we use the pass statement to construct a body that does nothing. Let us see an example to understand the functioning of pass statement in a program. Let us understand, Let us understand the pass, the pass statement, statement with the code, with the code example, example we have, we have seen earlier. Let us understand the pass statement with the code example we have seen earlier. Let us ex execute that code example over here. So we are going to the file mode and creating a new program file with a variable called sequence and here we are getting a sequence as p a s s as a list of characters and then we are iterating the for loop through this list for val in sequence pass we are simply writing pass let us find out what output it gives so when we execute this command nothing is given is being outputted nothing is being given as output now why why is this so let us understand the point let us understand the code over here when we are going to iterate val through this list we have written pass statement inside for loop so the control flow simply passes or skips this for loop so it does not execute the for loop at all whatever was there inside the for loop is not getting at all executed now let us see what happens if i am writing here print sequence and then writing pass let us see what happens run the module now you can see it is executing the list itself and it is showing you the output as the list itself for four number of times or whatever number of time the loop is getting executed since you have used here the print sequence or print value over here so it is iterating for n number of times so pass does not holds here anything so as we have learnt earlier that pass statement is only used to do nothing so if you want an empty for loop you can create it using simple simply writing pass statement inside an empty for loop so that it can be implemented in future so here are the three class assignments related to the topics being covered in this class as we have come to the end of this class. You are supposed to pause the video right now and go through all the three questions given in the assignment shown before you on the screen and try to solve them out. You may send your solution to our Kaizala group and you may discuss over different web platforms. So. See you in the next class. We'll see a lot of it again. Thank you.